the geopolitics of de-dollarization, great strategy, lessons for Africa and beyond. Well, when I was giving this topic, I knew that I have been working on some of the implications of the BRICS works and strategies where geopolitics is concerned. Geopolitics is nothing but the use of geography for the strategies of foreign policy. So you ask yourself, what is America looking for in Afghanistan? What are they looking for in Russia? Why do we still want to see um, Ukraine in NATO? And we are sending more arms and whatnot. These are all geopolitics. Why is it that Nana Kufuado wanted to buy some more helicopters, which Kufu uh, bought for the Ghana Armed Forces, which were very good for strategic lifting? But then an embargo was placed on the company, and therefore Kufuado could not go and buy, buy from us. These are all geopolitics. So I've explained what geopolitics means. And if you understand this, then you understand that the dominance and the hegemony of the dollar must be challenged because of geopolitics, and that is where we are now. The extent of the dollar, dollar and okay, my slides are teaching slides. <laughs> my slides are teaching slides. Uh, they are not lecture slides. A lecture slide, you have one line, and then you talk around it. So when you take my slides, it's like notes. That's why you see them longer. Right. Since 1945, actually, the dollar has been very, very dominant. It's because of the arrangement for payment system that my predecessor talked about of the world. Who is consuming? Who is, who is producing? Who is buying? By 1945, the whole world was down. We are all on our knees. Europe had been devastated by the war. And therefore, there was no country or no currency. They talked about the Spanish, the Dutch Guilda, then the British, all up to World War I. After World War I, the British Empire, on which the sun never set, the sun started setting. And therefore, there must be a new currency that will pivot the world payment system. And we found it in the American dollar because they were unscathed. America has never seen any war on its, on its uh, soil. They haven't seen mass uh, devastation. And therefore, it became the powerful house for production and trade. And so the currency became very vital, especially after 1945. And then the Bretton Woods system, which was introduced in 47, created a snake system where IMF was to um, manage global finance, management of global finance. In 19, so they didn't have any right to devalue. But in 71, things had started going bad. And Nixon had no, nothing to do but to devalue the dollar by 10%. It brought some jol jolts to the dollar. If it happened today, the BRICS would have succeeded long ago. But soon after the jolt started and the dollar de uh, de devalued by 10%, the Yom Kippur War of 73 created a condition where the Arab countries now had plenty of dollars because it was the money for trade. So they had plenty of dollars. They didn't know what to do with it. So IMF says, give me the money and I'll know what to do with it for you. That's how the IMF stayed. So we call it the petrodollar. The recycling of the petrodollar gave room for the dollar to have more strength. And that's why it still controlled us. Uh, the dollar's uh, strength also is the, the strength of the US. And they have been misusing it. Um, they have been use, misusing that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, monopoly to punish countries unnecessarily. I'm shooting out to tell you that this de-dollarization didn't start today. Gaddafi wanted an African currency, an African gold currency, and that's why he was overthrown. Iran mentioned it before. That's why Iran is where it is today. I don't know, as I'm even saying now, I don't know <laughs> where I'll be tomorrow. So an onslaught on the dollar is an onslaught on America, period. But it is because of its role, the role of the dollar in international relations, and that is why it has been so stubborn. First, as a medium of exchange, and the unit of account, and the store of value. If all governments, even if you are interested in dollarizing your property, 
Nowadays, in Ghana, even you sell your properties in dollars, you have, uh, what do you call it, dollarized everything. Everything is in dollar. So once you do that, then it means you, you are inviting the devil into your house, the dollar into your house. And once you do that, why are you crying? It must you know that governments have the willingness and the compliance system to, to adore the dollar. And that's why we are having this problem. And then the, that is what is giving the dollar that longevity in dominance. I've mentioned the Bretton Woods system. So the dollar is the world's most used currency by far. If you take the reason you will see. The attack on the dollar, as I said, is a geopolitical situation. And the geopolitical situation had, has arisen because of other foreign policies of both the BRICS and of the US. The US uses the dollar to intimidate. Only yesterday, Russia, you are, you are out of the... And, and you know what the US normally does is that it uses both governments and global institutions. It's like, if I, if I can be bold enough to tell you that, global institutions are under the ambit of, of the US. In fact, they have all been belted under the idiotic hypnosis of the US, period. Oh, yes. Yesterday, WHO told us that LGBTQ is a disease which should be treated. And then the following day, they tell you it's a human right because America says so. That's what is happening to the currency too. It's like once you are under the hypnosis of the US, once they say this, then all global institutions just follow. And that is what is annoying, especially China. Now that the economies, economy has grown to the extent that people are even thinking that it is the biggest economy in the world. People say it is second. Whether first or second, they say we want to get out. And Russia is interested, so much interested, and several other countries. I hear 40 other countries are ready to join the BRICS. But what the implications are, we don't know. <laughs> so the movement did not start today. From the day the BRICS were instituted, one of the biggest aims is to ensure that the dollar does not dominate their currency. Even quite recently, because of Ukraine, Russia says, okay, if I'm off the SWIFT and you have um, confiscated my assets outside, fine. Now, every grain, everything I produce and you want, my oil and that sort of thing, get rubles and come and pay me. Yes. And that is a way of an attack on the dollar. So, you see... Uh, I took these as headlines from, from the net. Russia, China proposed a new reserve currency, and you see them. Leaders of the BRICS, and they met in Osaka, Japan, June 28th, and that's what they are saying. This is also another headline. The anti-dollar drive spearheaded by Asia has spread to Europe, with France growing sour on the uh, greenbacks' dominance. Here are six rising threats to the bank's supremacy of global trade. So you see everywhere, challenging the dominance of the US dollar, the British quest for a new currency. And as I've said, they have been questing for this since 2009. I have some very interesting, they are, they are trying to create, they are actually trying to create a bank, which they call the New Development Bank. And the New Development Bank is going to be a multilateral development bank that helps underdeveloped, underdeveloped uh, nations pay for infrastructure. The bank opens this door in Shanghai in 2015 after being founded the same year. And several other countries are wanting to, but they wanted a $550 billion worth of a bank. And then people would subscribe to it. I hear France even at that time decided to think or rethink. Yeah. So that is going to be a new currency system. But that currency system, as we have said, is see for currencies to survive, it's only the, as a payment system, if you are not trading in that currency. If you are not trading in that currency. Thank you, I'm sorry about it. But I thought I had the teacher's voice, right? Thank you. So Malaysia, China, way launching an Asian monetary fund. You know. Then you have my name, namesake. Russia and Iran are a gold-backed uh, stable coin. You have Brazil and Argent Argentina plan a common currency, all as a payment system to go away from the dollar. You have UAE, India, look at using rupees in non-oil trade. All these things 
China pushes the yuan to replace the dollar in oil trade. And in the oil trade, Russia has the largest uh, production and deposits. And so if China also relies on oil a lot, why don't we trade in non-dollar situations? Well, I took this also from, from the net, and I think the edging is a wrong spelling. That is from a China. This is from a China uh, journal, Hui Ling Tang. Say Russia is edging, and I think not egging, it's edging Southeast Asian countries to, you know, when you take it like this, you can't edit. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows just how desperately it wants to save its flagging economy. Right. So you have Ethiopia wants to join the BRICS group of nations. So in Africa, we are even thinking, and my concern is that it shouldn't be individual affair. If we go in as AU, or even if the, uh, the sub-regional blocks will go in as blocks to try and align the, the word, align with the BRICS, it is, <laughs> it is, be <laughs> it is better. <laughs> France calls for reduced dependence on the U.S. dollar. You know, French Emmanuel Macron attends a news conference at the Elysee Palace in Paris, December 10, 2017. And that is when he made the, uh, he was trying to prepare the minds of the French people. Uh, why do we have the dollar dominating us all along? So what I, when I come to Africa, what should be our alignment or, what is the word you used? For Africa, dollarization and or de-dollarization may be understood differently. A very notable feature of financial development under the, most, under the mostly macroeconomically fragile economies, especially of sub-Saharan Africa, is the use of the dollar as a medium of exchange, store of value, or unit of account. It has emerged as a key factor explaining vulnerabilities and currency crises, which have long been persistent in sub-Saharan Africa. But you see, there are benefits of the dollar to us, one way or the other. In economies with high and volatile inflation, allowing foreign currency deposits, that the dollar deposits, may encourage residents to transact through the banking system rather than deposit money abroad or hold their savings in non-monetary assets. The use of the dollar can also bring credibility to a country's disinflation efforts, notably in situations of very high inflation. We owe 30 billion. Standard debt, I'm told. Please, you correct me if I'm wrong. And then we went to back the IMF. They gave us $3 billion, and it has stabilized our economy, even though we owe $30 billion. <laughs> Countries that have experienced episodes of high inflation or hyperinflation have often used the exchange rate as a nominal anchor and have managed to bring inflation down through exchange rate-based stabilization programs. You see, our inflation today, I've always... I've always tried to get it from the monetarists or the, the economists. I'm not an economist. I'm a political economist, actually. I shifted more into conflict and uh, other things. Because conflict is, is good. <laughs> Without it, I don't chop. I'm, I'm always asking, why is it that our monetary policy, especially in Ghana, I've observed over the years, is always inflation targeting? Nothing else. One way. And the inflation target, if you get $1, it helps. So I told you, $3 billion has stabilized our economy. And then you see the journalists always mentioning, the city, has stable, the city has gained something, something against the dollar. I love those words, what it gains. You know. In highly de-dollarized economies, therefore, the debate about reform frequently centers on whether these economies should fully dollarize, fully de-dollarize, or maintain a status quo. But the refutations are here. Even though the dollar rules us and we believe it's good, there are these things I call refutations. Indeed, dollarization can complicate the implementation of economic policies through various channels by A, exposing the balance sheets of the public sector, private enterprises, and households to exchange risk risks when assets and liabilities in foreign currency are mismatched. It may also... It, it, through, by reducing the authority's capacity to use monetary policy and making it harder to use the central bank's lender of last resort function to stabilize the domestic banking system. Three, 
weakening the structural fiscal balance and fiscal flexibility by reducing the scope of synergy, and finally, by reducing the abilities of governments to issue medium to long-term debt in domestic currency, known as the original sin, further exacerbating vulnerabilities to shocks and thereby amplifying macroeconomic and output fluctuations. So there is the BRICS summit which is coming on right now uh, in August. For many African countries, the impending BRICS summit offer an opportunity for something much larger. Various African countries, including Egypt, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, Angola, Nigeria, Sudan, and Tunisia have expressed interest in joining the BRICS. The bloc has become increasingly attractive. A number of economies in Latin America, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe are also angling to become members, including Saudi Arabia, Belarus, Iran, Mexico, Syria, Turkey, and Venezuela. Last year, Argentina also said it had received China's uh, formal support for its bid to join the BRICS. With BRICS members accounting for more than 40% of the world's population and around a quarter of the global gross domestic product, there is growing frustration over the world's dominance of financial systems. A new global pact. At the summit of the new global financial pact held in Paris in June 2023, leaders from the global south voiced their concerns about the worst dominance of financial systems. So we see the, it's gaining currency, it, the push is strong. Addressing the summit, Brazilian President Luiz Inacio Lula da Silva said, and I quote him, some people get scared when I say that we need to create new currencies for trade. So this is a discussion that is on my agenda and it's up to me. It will happen at the BRICS meeting. We need to get more African colleagues to participate, unquote. But then listen in interestingly. And South African President Cyril Ramaphosa responded, President Lula, and I quote him too, President Lula, don't worry. When we have the BRICS meeting in August, the issue of currency is top on the agenda. So we are going to discuss it. Yes, he mentioned it there. This is just this year. So with that now, the dollar, we must not make a mistake, is resilient and will seem to stubbornly challenge the onslaught against it for now, as it has done in the past. Given the peculiar nature of African economies, de-dollarization de may not be the option now. However, the currents are strong. And as my predecessor said, and I was discussing with uh, Dr. Andani also, the payment system, the system of payment, what are we waiting for? If we are able to come together and we say the echo is our system of payment because what we are consuming is what we are paying for. And if you are paying it in that currency, I gave a paper somewhere where I was saying that um, integration or currency development has much to do with trade intensity. And then he corrected me and said, you are trading trade intensity and what are you paying? What are you using in paying for that trade? So it's very important. In that situation, Africa may gravitate towards the BRICS China's trade with Africa in 2022 hit 220 billion mark and is expected to grow further. The African currency. Yes, we can have an African currency now if we push the way WAMI is pushing us. Attempts at creating an African currency have gone hand in hand with Air Force at Uniting Africa Integration. The Abuja Treaty had elements of how we should create an African currency. 91. Gaddafi and also wanted an African currency. I've mentioned that. The absence of the ingredients for creating an African currency include the lack of our trade in we have West Africa, we trade among ourselves only 10% horizontally. We all want to trade upwards this way, 86% of our trade with the North. You know, So if we are trading with the North, then they tell us which currency we should pay in. Nature and magnitude of the shocks. Are the shocks asymmetric? idiosyncratic or symmetric. When there are global shocks, how do they affect our economies? And that will also determine what, which currency you want to use. Factor mobility, you know, factors of production. How, how, how mobile are they within our African setup? And fiscal transfers, what kind of transfers? And now we are being assured that all these things have been taken care of. 